hi guys, Boners here, and this is my 100 PvE guide for 5.2, and in this guide I'll be covering survival. Okay, so let's have a look at the PvE specs and how they stand at the moment. As we can see here, we have survival, marksmanship, and beast mastery. Uh, this is a little graph that I knocked off in a couple seconds, well I say a couple seconds, probably a couple minutes, but you know. Um, as we can see underneath the bars, we've got the 496 item level, 502 item level, and the 522 item level, and then obviously best in slot, and the item level for best in slot is 535. And just below the item level, you can see in red, green, and purple the different specs, survival being the red, Marksman being green and Beast Mastery being purple and these have all got numbers on them running along to the item level and that basically is KDPS so if you've got an item level of 496 you're probably best off rolling survival 502 they're kind of all the same uh, 522 which is current tier 15 you probably best go in marksmanship and best in slot definitely best go in survival in this next part of the guide, I will be covering stats for your survival hunter. Okay, so stats are the core of your character and how you choose to balance those stats will greatly impact the effectiveness of your survival hunter. Right, let's start off with some stat priority. Obviously you have to start with agility, best stat, love it. Expertise, 7.5%, ranged hit, 7.5%, then your best secondary stat would be crit, then haste, then mastery. Right, let's run over some stat summaries. Agility increases all damage dealt and slightly increases critical chance. Okay, expertise 7.5%. The expertise cap of 7.5% or 2500 rating will eliminate your attacks from being dodged. So basically to view your expertise, open up your character screen and make sure it's 7.5%. Next on, ranged hit. Hit rating increases your chance to hit and at 7.5% ranged hit, or 2550 rating, your abilities can no longer miss on bosses. Check that you have 7.5% or you will lose DPS. Next is the best stat, which is crit. Increases the chance for your attacks to critically hit for additional damage, usually about 200% weapon damage or ability damage. So next one would be haste. This is going to decrease the cast time for such abilities as Cobra Shot. Also causes you to auto attack faster and increases focus regeneration. Right, and now the worst stat is Mastery. Essence of the Viper. Increases magical damage by 8% and for every 600 Mastery equals 1% more damage. E.g. 6000 Mastery would be 10% plus 8% would be 18% more damage. Right, let's move on to some reforging, gems and enchants for your survival hunter. Okay, basically reforging allows you to modify the secondary stats on your gear. So, when we reforge, we have to stick to the stat priority, which again is agility, expertise 7.5%, range 7.5%, crit, haste, then mastery. Okay, so after reaching the hit and expertise cap, make sure to max out your secondary stats. So basically go by this rule, on any gear without crit or haste, reforge the weakest stat into crit or haste as available. If crit is unavailable, reforge to haste. Okay? Right, now I'll have a look at some enchants for your survival hunter. And on the shoulders I would definitely go for the Greater Tiger Claw, which gives you 200 agility and 100 crit rating. On the cloak, Again, crit being the best secondary stat, I would go for 180 plus crit, or if you really need the hit, go for the cloak accuracy enchant. On the chest, it's uh, glorious stats, which is plus 80 to all. Uh, braces, which is greater agility, 180. Gloves, again, if you need expertise, go for the expertise. If you don't, go for the haste. On your belt, what you want is a living steel belt buckle and what that does is gives you an additional gem socket. Um, on the legs you want a shadow leather leg armour which is 285 agility plus 165 crit. Boots which is blurred speed, increased movement speed and 140 agility. 
On your weapon, you want Lord Blastington's Scope of Doom, which sometimes increases agility by 1800 for 10 seconds. Right, now some gems that would be really useful. Uh, for your meta gem, you want to be using an Agile Primal Diamond, 216 agility, plus 3% increased critical damage, which is amazing. And any prismatic sockets, which will be from either blacksmithing if you have an additional socket, or your living steel belt buckle, just use a delicate primordial ruby, which is 160 agility. For the blue gems, use glinting imperial aethermist, which is 80 agility and 160 hit, or use the accurate imperial aethermist, which is 160 hit, 160 expertise. For the red gems, use a delicate primordial ruby, which is 160 agility, and for the yellow gem sockets, use a deadly vermilion onyx, 80 agility and 180 crit, or a death vermilion onyx, which is 80 agility and 180 haste. Okay guys, in this part of the video, I'm going to be running through some talents, some glyphs, and how to spec your pet. Okay, basically, talents and glyphs allow us to tweak our hunter to the encounter, but what I'm going to show you today is, ba is the, just the baseline for DPS, survival, and utility. Okay, and our first talent is post haste. Uh, your disengage frees you from all movement impairing effects and increases your movement speed by 60% for 8 seconds. Okay, this is extremely useful. I cannot remember how many times that this has actually saved me from dying, from being somewhere I shouldn't have been and I need to get to somewhere else very fast. Okay, um, next one is Silent Shot. Some bosses still allow you to interrupt some spells, some elite mobs on the way to the boss, you can interrupt them. Still a very good talent. The next one would be Aspect of the Iron Hawk. Basically this just decreases all damage that you take by 15% and still gives you 15% attack power. Now a lot of people moan and say they want to take consideration but no. It's a lot more beneficial if you take Iron Hawk just because you'll be getting 15% less damage for the whole length of the encounter. Okay in the next talent it's going to be Dire Beast summons a powerful wild beast to attack your target for 15 seconds. Each time the beast deals damage, you'll gain 5 focus. So this is very good, gives you a small amount of DPS, and but the main thing is it gives you focus regeneration to use on other abilities. The next one again is Murder of the Crows. This one does a lot more damage than Blink Strike and Lynx Rush, so this is a number one choice for me and if you use it when your target is below 20% health the cooldown is reset to 60 seconds and finally for the level 90 talent I'd go for Glaive Toss again it's 15 second cooldown 40 yard range low focus costs it's a no-brainer right now let's move on to some glyphs now the first glyph you want to take is Glyph of Animal Bond this is amazing while your pet is active and all healing done to you and your pet is increased by 10% so that instantly gives your healers 10% more healing on you and your pet. The next one would be Glyph of Deterrence and this increases all damage reduction granted by 20% so now you'll be having 50% damage reduction and whenever you need an encounter to migrate some damage that is a perfect Glyph. And the third one is a kind of user's choice but I always choose Glyph of Disengage just because if I get in a sticky situation and I need to get out fast I just disengage further away right let's move down to some minor glyphs right this aspect of the cheater is very good if your job role for the fight is to kite some ads and basically what this does this stops you from getting dazed because if you didn't have that glyph and you got hit you'd be dazed for four seconds but with this glyph you can kite and all that happens if you get hit is just your aspects go on a four second cooldown. Right, um, the other two are just glyphs to help improve your utility. Um, glyph of aspect of the pack basically incre increases the range of your aspect of the pack by 15 yards. Not major, but it still helps. And glyph of revive pet, if your pet ever dies, which it does happen, and you're getting hit from the bob, 
the boss or ads, you want to reduce all the pushback. So this reduces that by 100%. Right, and now currently the best spec for your pet is Ferocity. Obviously because it combat experience increases all damage done by 50%. Spiked Collar increases a pet's attack speed by 10% and your own. Rabid increases your pet's attack speed by 70% for 20 seconds. Okay, in this part of the guide, I'll be covering the DPS rotation and cooldowns. First things first, what you want to do, you want to put your aspect of the Iron Hawk on, aspect of the Hawk. After that, you need to execute the following priorities. Apply your Hunter's Mark, uh, basically maintain the debuff, apply Serpent Sting, and refresh it with Cobra Shot every time. Use explosive shot and cooldown, and when you get a lock and low proc, make sure you quickly cast three explosive shots. Use a glaive toss and cooldown. Kill shot when the target is below 20% health. Always save 40 focus for your black arrow. And then arcane shot to dump focus, and cobra shot to build focus. Uh, so now on the AoE rotation. Uh, this is a recommended rotation for when attacking four or more mobs. Okay, so basically at first you use Explosive Trap instead of Black Arrow. You multi-shot as your focus dump. And your multi-shot benefits from Serpent Spread to put Serpent Sting on all the mobs. So if you use that rotation, you'll get very high DPS. Okay, we'll move on to effective cooldowns. These, obviously these effective cooldowns are available if you choose them in your talent build. So Murder of the Crows, use it on cooldown. Dire Beast, use it on cooldown for extra focus. And there are some additional extra cooldowns to take into consideration. Obviously you have Rabid from your pet, so use that on cooldown. So either stack it with Rapid Fire or Bloodlust. But guys, make sure you don't stack Rapid Fire with Bloodlust. You don't want to be stacking it with Bloodlust because your Cobra Shot will just be, it'll mess up your rotation and you want to keep your Cobra Shot down for as long as possible. So maybe after Bloodlust, use Rapid Fire, then Readiness, then Rapid Fire again. Okay? So basically, Readiness resets all the cooldowns except, except Stampede. So use that to chain DPS cooldowns. And obviously, use stampede as often as possible usually on the pull of the fight and midway in the fight okay so now I'm gonna do a short video for you on the rotation I hope you enjoy hey guys okay this is just a small video on a rotation okay so what you wanna do is you wanna apply hunters mark uh, start with stampede then murder of the crows rapid fire Serpent Sting, Black Arrow, keep Cobra Shot in, focus, as soon as Explosive Shot comes on cooldown, use it, and uh, again, see I had a proc, do triple Explosive Shot, Cobra Shot again to build focus, Explosive Shot, and use Arcane Shot to dump some of that focus, but make sure you keep 40 focus for your Black Arrow, and again, 3, there we go, enough for the Black Arrow, I pop Readiness again, and my Murder of the Crows has ended, so I can now repop that and rapid fire. Three explosive shots, and again, I have enough focus my Black Arrow. And I'm, what I'm doing is also maintaining Serpent Sting. Uh, that's basically it, guys. Just keep using your cooldowns, keep track of it, as you can see on my left hand side. I have a uh, tracking of my cooldowns so I can see when I need to reapply stuff and just stick to the guide and you should be pulling good DPS. I want to shout out to Bonaz as well who's supporting me in my videos just give me a nice pet thank you very much mate and that's it cheers bye so thanks for watching the video guys uh, please like and sub please leave a comment um, if you don't leave a comment and tell me how I've done, what I need to improve, I'll never be able to improve.